So, good morning. This is now the official start. We will see if somebody else uh, is not scared after my lecture yesterday and will still uh, come. You know, today I would like to treat you not as students but as entrepreneurs. As I announced yesterday, this is maybe the reason why I see so less people here. Uh, I'm really uh, yeah, interested in your ideas now, and then we could split up in, I think, two groups is enough, and, and, and work out the ideas with, with the Blue Ocean concept. Yeah. Because the, le the lecture is nice, but you, you only get familiar with the method if you really do it. Yeah. There's nothing else but doing it. Yeah. And if, if you really do it, then you really get at least some kind of, of experience and some kind of feeling what is, what is feasible with this toolbox and uh, what not and what are maybe the, the traps you should, you should avoid if you do it later on uh, in your life. So first question, how many of you brought some bright ideas? Or even fool, foolish ideas? Doesn't matter. You have an idea? You? You? Two ideas? One, 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 one idea or two ideas? How is it? Okay, one idea, one, one, and that's it. No? Okay. So to start, could you just present your idea in one minute or whatever? Very, very shortly, just, just to give us an, an, an idea. In two words, uh, just uh, the, the idea is uh, to provide, I don't know, energy or the services of the energy uh, wireless. Of course. So to provide wireless energy. Yeah. Okay. Two different applications uh, for your cell phone, for your automobile, for for whatever you want. Okay. Next idea. Uh, no. My idea is like a more funny one. Everybody, I think everybody likes slides. In the water parts, mm -hmm. but the problem is that you have to walk up there. Yes. You, nobody likes the stairs. Mm -hmm. So maybe the idea is to create the moving slide. You would be in one place and the yep. slide would be moving underneath you. It's a crazy idea. Well, there are no, you know, there are <coughs> an idea can't be crazy enough. Okay, yes. Sorry, what? Muslim. 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 Okay, yeah. Yeah. There's a market. There's a market. Okay. 
the market. It's okay. a special group uh, for men and for, uh, for Muslim. <laughs> okay, I, I, I think I got the idea. It, it, it really <laughs> one of the most amazing ideas I ever got. It's such a workshop. <laughs> Okay. He, he, died, uh, he stated that this is uh, a, a problem for him because according to Quran, mm -hmm. he is not to pray to his God if he is not uh, clean. Mm -hmm. you know? so, uh, so, of course, public toilets are not the cleanest places. And he said that also he must not have his underwear stained. So this would then prohibit him to pray to his God. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Is that? <laughs> this is... Uh, <laughs> This is the idea, okay? I also mentioned this once in the company where I work, and the people were like, are you, are you kidding? Are you kidding us? <laughs> are, you, are you real? Is this true what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but the thing about what I was told yesterday, look first at the uh, of course the Muslim population is growing in Europe. Of course, all over the world we have a lot of Muslims. And if this is a problem, and uh, whatever health care company or uh, because it's absolutely crazy. And as you say, most of the people will think you're cheating or whatever. Okay, so we got three, three interesting ideas. One is this thing we, we, we all understood. Uh, the other one is, uh, I would maybe like to, to, to do it more generally. Not, not, you know, in the pollution, it's, it's always a business model. So it's, you normally you don't uh, try to, to make a solution for one distinct problem. You try to make it more uh, comprehensive. So maybe it's, it's about a new concept in, in, in water farm parks. Yeah? This could it be. So the slides, I think, is our, our one part of this park. But maybe there are other things in, the, in this is water parks. You could introduce, you could change to be more attractive or whatever. For the young ones and for the, for the older ones. I think we all like these slides. Also, do. So, new concepts for, for water, farm work, and your concept is about energy. Ener energy supply in cities? Yeah, we need it. Uh, it could be anywhere. Uh, a wireless, so let's say, because I think all. Of course, this is, this is one of the greatest mistakes when, when somebody has an idea and the technician starts to think if this idea is technically feasible, yeah? because in that case, you're killing most of the ideas. So you should really avoid it. Also, I now do this, do this mistake. So what I would like to add, to, to, to add is, maybe it is a problem always to do it wireless, but to do it flexible. So if you, you know, exchange wireless by, by flexible, you have different places in the, in the city, hubs, whatever you want to call it, and there you have the possibility to, to, to get energy for your, inner, for, for your electric car, for your mobile phone, for computer, laptop, whatever. Huh? So we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is excellent. Because as you all know, nine can easily be divided by three. <laughs> Don't even need a calculator. So in this case, I think it really makes sense to split it in three groups because all these ideas are somehow mad, but somehow interesting. And well, I think three persons are normally enough to, to work out the concept. So I think it makes sense to, to split up in three groups. Uh, so how should we split? Uh, are you able to, to organize it or must I say it? you and that group, you and that group, you and that group? Well, let's, let's, let, let's try it. Who, who is going to go for the, for the energy concept? Please raise up your hands. I think it's of course you, you the inventor. So you need two more people who want to supply energy to the people in the city. Who's going to join you? Okay. One more. Hmm? I don't like it here. You all make it. Because this group have to look at that group. <coughs> Your energy? Your energy card? Okay. So then we have here the energy group. And this is the, the, the water farm part. You all, you all swimmers. <laughs> yeah. More or less? Okay. You all like water? Excellent. So this is the water group, this is the energy group, and here we have this very special group. <laughs> <laughs> still, I'm still thinking of the title. You'll find some new title. It's really funny. I'm going to look forward to the future. Maybe this is a new textbook example for the future. 
future, how to come up with a blue ocean. Uh, you know, this is now really the, 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 the start, the basis. Now we have an idea. As I also told you yesterday, an idea, if you don't come to the market, if you don't make anything out of an idea, it's just nothing, it's just an idea. And uh, one of my awesome colleagues, Professor Paul Salim, who is also going to give a lecture in tomorrow, in the morning afternoon, he always says that uh, Europe is the graveyard of good ideas, which means you can have a lot of ideas, but if you don't make anything out of these ideas, just nothing. Yeah? And in Europe, we're really specialists. We have excellent ideas, we have excellent knowledge, excellent universities, but much too less entrepreneurs, much too less uh, innovation. That's the problem. And yeah, with this uh, Blue Ocean toolbox, we hopefully uh, can change a little bit. So now you have the idea. This is the starting point. So, what you must do in the Blue Ocean uh, concept is you know the strategy can not the strategy is the heart of every Blue Ocean concept. Now you have the idea, you know what you're thinking of. So what you should start is to define, together with your colleagues, what are the most important parameters. What about the parameters, the, the patterns or whatever, who describe best your business? What is essential? For energy, what is essential for water, farm market, what is essential for this uh, special toilet uh, care product? What is really saying? And once again, the blue ocean list always focuses on the big picture, so not on too much details. It doesn't make sense if you say, oh, this and that and this and that is important, and you come up with 20, 30 parameters. Yeah? With 30 parameters, you cannot put up a strategy. So really, try to find out the most important, which means not more than 10, 10 to 12, and then it's really an upper limit. Not more. Really, only the most important parameters, which describe. And this you could really do in the in the group by discussing, sitting together and just discussing what are the, the parameters. But don't uh, don't say the parameters. At the beginning, don't say, say okay, this parameter is uh, should be high, this should be low, whatever. Just say okay, this is important for our business. We should pay attention. And if you have this important parameters to describe your business, then you can start by making a strategy canvas how the business looks at the moment. So this is not your idea, this is just a, a now situation. So what is the situation now if you need energy? <coughs> what is the situa situation now if you can do a water from yeah? there? And what is the situation now for our Muslim colleagues if they go to the toilet and you want to have clean hands after that, yeah? How is the situation now? Some, whatever, so. so. This is definitely the situation you want to change. This is definitely the situation which you think customers, people, companies are not happy with. But this is the situation how it is. And then, you can now blue pens if you do this. Look to look. Okay, there's no blue one. Anyway, uh, the red one is not good, so I stick to the color. And then you take uh, the four cornerstones of pollution, which is the, remember, the reduce, eliminate, create, or rise. So you think about these parameters, who you put. Level up to make sure get down for which you could maybe completely make new, which you could create. And here at the stage, which goes from, goes from one to six, and even numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. No counts. So you can easily make an extra five. Just one to six, and here you have slots of ten parameters. 
refers to these other quantum parameters and then you say, okay, this is parameter now, high, low, or medium. And then you take also, besides the four corner stones, these six different houses. So you have three nodes, a uh, pair of nodes, and there is uh, six questions uh, and questions. You can look at So my proposal is if everybody takes responsibility for two of these key questions and to think what could you make different in your blue ocean. Yeah? But it's not a good idea if you just say, okay, the situation now is like that. And we're just making a we're just making anything different. No, whatever. We're just making it like that. Because this is different. Just making it different is not a notion. So you really analyze the most important parameters, how the situation is now at the market. Of course, you cannot do now in market research in your view of you're sitting in this lecture. That's clear. In reality, you would say, okay, now we have of a few days or even some weeks if it's a very complicated situation and you need some <coughs> market you ask you are marketing and, and sales people or you use some, some other data from our third parties etc so really to get a detailed picture of the market yeah here now for the day you just have to use the gut feeling yeah your experience as a customer but normally this, this gut feeling is you know first guess it's normally not too bad once again, really concentrate on the, on the big picture, not, not on too much details. So you all know what is a water park. You all know how the energy is now supplied in the city. Eh? And you probably know, or you can imagine, what problems the main market uh, could face in the toilet. Yeah? It's funny that the only two ladies are sitting in the, in the, in the toilet. <laughs> Maybe it will bring in some new, uh, some new blue ocean ideas to come out of the box. Uh, the true sense of the world. So really take these questions. What could you change and what new could you bring in? So for example here when you say steady trend, as I told you, Muslim population are definitely one of the steady trends, also in Europe. Eh? not only in the Arabic uh, countries. Or examination of the chain of bias. Yeah? If you're talking about a water farm box, yeah? in a water farm box there's not only the children, it's, it's, it's the parents, it's the children, maybe it's also the, the, grand, the grandparents. They all go to the water farm box. Normally a child is not left alone, so you should look at the total chain of bias. How can you influence them? How can you make your water fund dog more attractive? So maybe oh, just a, a, a longer slide or a slide which is movable is maybe not enough, yeah? Because it must be, you know it must be attractive for the for the really small ones to the yeah. to the adult one. Yeah? Really look at the, at the full chain of parts. Yeah? And for example, alternative branches or so, yeah, for the electric, for the energy problem, or for the energy concept. What could be alternatives? Yeah? What is already installed in a city? Yeah? What could people use? So why should they be why should they go for your concept? I guess at the end of the day you must go with your concept to the politicians of a city and ask if you can install the devices, if they want to cooperate with you, or you can found a city, uh, found a found a company and say, okay, city of Maripur, city of Ljubljana, whatever, you give me a certain amount of money and I will install this, uh, this device for you. Or you can charge the, the customers. You can tell the city, as we all know, and this is the same situation in Austria and all over Europe, the cities and the governments, they have no money. Yeah? So if you go there and you tell them, okay, I, I would need some money, they would say, get out. Yeah? But if you tell them, okay, just give me the, the, the place, you just give me, you, you're willing to give me the allowance, to install the devices in the places and I will uh, charge the customers who use it. 
won't cost you anything and maybe also the city gets some, some profit, this could be interesting. So think of the different alternatives which are already now and uh, which could uh, compete with your business or which you could use for your business. Yeah? So really go to these uh, six questions and really think over your concept. The good, the good thing is that we have really enough time for this workshop. I mean, normally I do such, such workshops with, with companies in two days, but anyway. Yeah? Yesterday I did it in very short to introduce the message to you. So today we really have time to, to work out the concept. Yeah? You know, we have two, two, two hours in the workshop. So we have enough time to that you start with the parameters, start with the now situation, then you have time to really work out the strategy, the concept. And at the end, what I would expect from you <coughs> is that every group is able to present such a strategy canvas. Either you just write it down with your hand, or either you have a, have a laptop with an Excel file, you just type it in and really quickly build up such an Excel file. And uh, you present it to your colleagues. And please uh, behave in a way that you think that this is not your colleagues, these are possible investors, politicians, customers, yeah, investors. Yeah, you have a nice idea for a water farm park, investors, and you want to convince them that they. they support you, that they give you money, uh, that they give uh, you a chance for your idea to come to the market. So please form your groups. I will go from group to group and yeah, just start. Let's do it. You were right. Thank you very much. Uh, you have you have you have to join one of the groups, yeah? Just for your information, one 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 group is energy, the other group is a uh, water farm bug, and the third group is a uh, new uh, toilet hygienic uh, tools for male Muslims. So maybe the most informally dressed is the most creative one, I guess. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like the Steve Jobs, yeah? <laughs> Never ever a check. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you. Thank so what comes to mind when you think about an e-box? Anyone? What comes to mind when you think about an e-box? Maybe not my team, because you know, obviously know, but maybe you. Electronic box? In what sense? It's really simple design. It's like 
you come to the city, you have a parking space and this box next to it. And it's really an idea for the future. It's supposed to be that this box eventually fills up your car. And we went further than that. We went a step ahead. We went to, we took this idea and we put it into a little graph. We said, okay, but well let's not make the user pay for it. Let's make ads pay for it. And then we took that further. We said, okay, what about shops? Let's incorporate some shops. There's shops, there's many shops in the city. So how about the nearest shops that is, and if it's our partner, then the nearest shops pays for the price of the electricity. So essentially, let's say you have a car, you have an e-car. You come into the city, it's half full. And let's say last week you bought at one of our partners for 200 euros worth of goods. And this actually gives you benefits in a way that you can charge your car for free here in this parking spot. You don't have to pay the parking nor the gas or the electricity. And in a sense, it's, it's a really new idea. It, it's a fabulous idea. Let's say otherwise I'd pay, I don't know, 10 euros for the electricity here. And uh, yeah, it's a full circle. And then this is our strategy canvas. Um, and we compared it with two gasoline networks today. So what a car today would be on gas. And uh, we went from particle pollution, which we really think that electricity doesn't have any. Electric cars, we don't think they have any particle pollution, while gasoline, everybody knows, has a lot of CO, CO2 emissions, and monoxide, everything. Then we looked at time, and we figured, you know, you're, you're gonna go shopping, you know? So you're charging your car while you're shopping. You don't have to go to a charging station to charge up your car. So in this way, you're actually saving more time, which you can spend on something else. I can't have kids, you know? Because everybody these days complains how they don't get time with kids. It's a great solution. Uh, then we looked at the price. You're not gonna, the customer is not gonna pay anything. I mean, it's the ads, it's the shops in the nearby that pay for the gas or for the fuel. Uh, while gas, you have to pay from your own pocket. Like, no, no ad is going to pay for it. You put an ad on your car, but I don't think that's going to pay for your gas. Um, then you, convenience. It's very convenient because it's in a parking space. While gasoline, it's not so, much, it's not so convenient. And we looked at club membership, which is also an idea we have, which is once you, let's say you come with your car, you plug in the, plug in the plug, and then it doesn't start charging until you put in your details. And by getting your details, we can, we can measure where you've been, what, what you bought, like the amount you bought, and based on that, we can determine how much gas we, how much fuel we give you. Um, and these benefits that you have is what I said, like how much fuel you get is how much free fuel you get. Because if you go over, like you can choose to go over the limit and that's what you pay the extra. Um, and then market, market flexibility, like it can be anybody. Anybody can add. Um, then safety compared to gas. I mean, you know, anybody can get hurt, even in the electricity, because it's high voltage, but like we think it's a reduced risk compared to uh, gasoline. And then we, we, what we prove is it's green. Yeah, and we prove partnerships, because we're going to have to have partnerships with all the shops, all the shopping malls, you know, whoever's going to use our services, and connectivity, adaptability. We have different business plans depending on whether we're in a shopping mall or in the city. Because it's a different situation, different context. And that's what we're really focusing on. It's not one model for everything, but it's really adaptable. And yeah, that's it. That's e box stuff. Hopefully, in a couple of years, when you come into the city, you're going to charge your car on the e box. Thank you. <coughs>
Kontakt mit dem CEO, CEO, dem Chief of Marketing, der dann noch das sieht, die nur kommt und die Titel hängen ins Kapitel. Ist der Steve Jobs auf jeden Fall. So, so it is really very uh, yeah, convincing concept, and you know I have a, a, a lot of uh, because uh, like we some, some venture capital investors or like the great CEOs. I can see that that presentation really had everything in his two slides. He had the strategy. He explained it very clear what it is about. You even had this, as I said, this is corporate design already. And for me, it was very convincing. It was really a concept where you could feel the company. Would you invest in our company? <laughs> as you told me before. <coughs> but, uh, <coughs> but I think this is really a presentation, slide modification, and we really could go to, to some investor speech where yeah. 10 or 15 uh, companies or startups try to get uh, venture capital. Don't need much more. Maybe two or more, two or three more slides to really to, to show how this device could look like. Some are going, and that's it. And like you getting out there and you perfect English, convincing the people. I, I could really come from the bottom of my mind. I could think that we could find some of the The technology is there, you just have to combine the things, and you just have to, to uh, you, need, you need to seek to the stuff. So maybe even Mario in a few years when I come with my next car, I will find it very convenient to get the interest of it. Because this is, this is one of the big challenges for the future, when this electric car cars really come. And what, what you take, and what you did in, in your group is to, to take this not only, you know, normally people say, okay, the future we may drive electric cars, and where do we get the electricity? And you take, took, took this as, as a chance to make it completely your business model to combine it with the shops, with the shopping malls, yeah? the shop owners. And that, that's exactly what, what the ocean is. Uh, not to see it, see it, it as a risk, but to see it as a chance to make a new business out of it. So if you're the first one, you yeah, to start with that, it's good really nice. In that case, I hope that I get a, a little, you know, this card. <laughs> because I was a little, little, little bit of <laughs> Many thanks. May I ask you? <laughs> hey guys, I presume all of you like to have fun. Our basic idea is to take the amusement park to the next level. We would but the area of the park could be stay the same, but our main difference is we would use the simulations in the park. So in the beginning, you don't need the constructions and building the park. You just need to buy or to create the simulation for the each activity. If, for example, for the, I don't know a, a simulator for the base jumping, because like I know that a lot of people are afraid of height, but they are still interested in. What are, how, how, what are the experiences you get during the base jump? So you could actually, we could actually build the simulator and you could actually jump and the air would keep you in, the, the pressure of the air would keep you balanced in the air so you could like get some experiences. Um, so this is our chart. The first point is the crowd. We took some well-known part, which is like the Gardaland. I'm sure everybody knows it. Um, the main problem in Gardaland are the crowds, because there is like too many people there every day. I just read it on the internet that approximately from half an hour till one hour, you are waiting for each activity to do each day, every day in the year. So that's a lot of time. In uh, in our park. We would decrease that by when you would like enter the park, some electric cars or something would uh, wait you there, and you could like create your own path through the simulator to simulator, and the car would take you there. So there would be no crowds. The next point are injuries. I'm 
sure for exact number of injuries in the these days parks <coughs> in the parks, but I'm sure there are some. Uh, in the simulator, you cannot get hurt. Nothing can get broken. You cannot fall down or anything. So it's much more safer. Uh, rating lines, we would reduce them. Uh, I already explained it in the in the crowd. So there are no waiting. There are, the rating lines are reduced because of the cars that have like a smart system in it and will take you to, the, to that simulator where there is no crowd in that time. The parking problems, I know that the huge, the huge amusement parks have a huge parking lots and sometimes people forget where they parked or there's no, par there's no space if you come like an hour later or something. So we would create the how is it called? The parking house beneath the park, beneath the entire park. And for example, if you would buy a ticket at let's say 8 a.m., everybody knows that at 4 p.m. you're like really tired and you cannot see anymore. So you would create a system that your car after those hours would auto automatically be brought to the entrance. So you, would, you wouldn't like search for your car for the next hour. So that would be faster. The price, well, if there are people willing to spend a day in an amusement park, waiting an hour for each amusement, we think that in our price, we, we could have the same price, but we could achieve much more with each simulator. So we don't need to reduce price. That's our Korean philosophy. Mm, food and drinks, everybody's hungry, everybody's thirsty during the day, so we would also have the same or even more uh, variety of foods. Functionality, um, because of the, the car system and everything, our amusement, our simulation part would be more functional. Attractiveness, well, everybody's a is attractive to go to the amusement park, that's why they go. But in our park, you could have like, I don't know, 100, 200, 300 different simulators. And I think that would be more interested than just go to the, let's say for example, to the garden where you can only have like 10 roller coasters or I don't know, something else. Age groups, in other amusement parks, there's like a limitation, you have to be, I don't know, 130, 140 centimeters tall, or you cannot be older than, I don't know, some age. But in a simulator, you can go in a simulator as a child or as an old person, so basically, there's not no, some, there's like a huge variety of, uh, of the age group. And as I already mentioned, the diversity. You can create a simulator for like almost everything. You can create a simulator for a child up to 10 years, or you can create a simulator for old people. If there are some activities that only old people do, I don't know. <laughs> and we could also create the, simula the simula simulators that would have like a smart computer or something, and you would like wear, some, wear a special dress or hold something in your hand and you could actually participate in a game or for example if you would go like uh, skydiving you would wear a special, a special suit the computer would recognize it and you could actually like go left or right on the screen and collect stars and the person who collected the most stars in that day would win and I don't know get a special meal uh, uh, covered in food or maybe get an extra ticket for the next year or something like that and that's basically it. Thank you. Uh, in that case, as far as I understood, the, the, the Belarus is not, of course, that here had, had, had an amusement park. There are already a lot of amusement parks in place, but that you have developing a completely new type of amusement park. Yeah? That, that, that's your Belarus. Yeah? So it's like, this uh, textbook example of the circuit so 
And here you say, okay, we don't have to, we don't build up or we don't copy again a classical amusement park, but you are doing most of the things with, as far as I understood, really high end uh, simulators, yeah? Yes. It's not just a, like in a cinema, it's much more, yeah? And the whole family can go there. Smaller kids, yeah, even kids below 10 years, yeah? yeah? Like mine, yeah. <laughs> so, so, should offer something for the really, for these really small kids and up to the to the older ones. You know, as I told you yesterday, uh, a population which gets older and older is also a very steady trend. And nowadays, people who are older are normally also very active. Yeah, people who are 50, 60 years are still active. They're pretty sure they will also be uh, a recent park. And if you have this really this this, this simulated concept, uh, I think as we discussed, you can get a lot of a uh, price advantage. Well, the simulator is, of course, it's high tech, but the simulator is much more cheaper than you build up the whole yeah. facility, yeah? Like in this uh, big uh, amusement box. So this is could really be a chance to uh, get the tickets at a considerable price, yeah? And of course, also like the idea with, with, with the car, which is built, however, but principally this is possible, which is brought to you, or you are brought to the car, whatever, it works at, at the end. So after a full day with the kids, you don't have to go in a, in a parking lot and you see what, where is your car and you're not, you're not finding your car. So this is definitely also something to, to, to make it you know, much more comfortable uh, for many persons and for families and maybe also for handicapped persons. And yes, I think this is, this is, this is also a very, very interesting concept. And maybe you also you don't need that much area to build such a, such a park. Yeah? Maybe you could even, uh, if you think of a slower, of, of, uh, uh, smaller version, you could even maybe uh, make, make, make it in, in a building. Yeah? Yeah. A huge building in the, within Maripur or whatever, you could offer whatever, 20, 30 simulators, and with 20, 30 simulators you can make a lot of different experiences, as you said. Yeah, including, uh, Typing, driving a car, steering an airplane, uh, whatever, going back to the Middle Ages, uh, a lot of stuff. So yeah, it's a good really piece of the new type of music. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Thank you. And now, uh, last but not least, I think this is the presentation we're all waiting for, <laughs> for this very special product. Yeah. Who's going to present? Now we want to learn about the man who really needs to take Listen to Yes. Okay. I would like to give you a brief uh, presentation of a, of a product uh, that's in development, obviously. Uh, it's called Freshman's Friends. It's a tentative title. And uh, uh, just to give you a, a, a another brief uh, 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 background, what's the background idea behind it. It's a bit, maybe a bit controversial to base uh, uh, a consumable uh, commodity product on a, something as uh, individual as uh, a religion is to an uh, individual person. But what we've learned, again, uh, is that, um, that a uh, Muslim male uh, after, after going to the toilet, uh, must be very careful not to stain his underwear with urine because that will uh, consequently obstruct his ability to worship his respective God, Allah in this case, because of this stain. So what we're after is, is to offer a solution for a religious person who would still like to practice his his belief and uh, uh, do his prayers as much as he feels that he needs to, regardless of where he is at work, on travel, whatever, outside. So, uh, what we're basing our product is, uh, what we're we basing on, is kind of a hygienic pad. So, a pad that one would insert in his underwear and would basically efficiently provide uh, protection for underwear against any drops of urine that might uncur after 
uh, after going to the toilet. So, yeah. Uh, we were a bit, we must confess, we didn't have a, 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 a kind of a, a straightforward, conventional, already commercial product against which we could uh, compare our uh, proposed product. Uh, but um, we somehow took as, an, um, uh, as a starting point a female hygienic products that are used in similar case. So, uh, I will just now lead you through the parameters that we found uh, very important uh, for the development of such a product. So, first of all, price. Uh, conventional products, as you can see, the red line is a conventional product and the black line stands for our product. So price in this case is uh, quite is quite low. It's a, it's a commodity product and it's uh, it's mass produced. Uh, in our case, due to certain factors that I will mention a bit later on, uh, and since uh, we believe that this would be a one of a kind product in the market, we could afford to go higher with the price. So what is missing here? We have here we have to the eliminate, reduce, raise, and create. Uh, uh, um, sections. So, what we decided then to eliminate from the existing product is the content of super absorbent powders. Uh, these are synthetic, synthetic artificial compounds that, uh, that allow for uh, high absorption of, of liquid, urine, blood, whatever. So, but in our case, since we're going to deal with small quantities of liquid, so let's say drops of urine, we can eliminate this material compound and go for strictly, uh, let's say, cellulose-based, cotton viscose-based product that uh, is renewable, sustainable, uh, so there is no need for uh, this uh, additional compound. Also in the same line, we decided that we will be able to reduce the bulkiness and the size of already commercial products. Again, due to the fact that we will be dealing with much lower uh, uh, quantities of liquid. Uh, as you can see, this super absorbent powder, so these additional compounds and bulkiness and size present quite a big, uh, uh, they, they are quite, uh, quite prominent in the conventional products. Then we go to the design. This we feel is uh, really important, especially in the case because we are going to design a completely different product, which will be designed for men, obviously. So nothing like this exists yet, we think, we hope. Uh, and uh, so it has to fit the main anatomy. So this will be, this will present a, a very big importance for us, uh, as opposed to a, a conventional one that uh, pretty much. Uh, f uh, follows uh, some basic, uh, uh, basic, let's say, shape. Another important one, and this is what we're going to uh, uh, increase in, is comfort and discretion. discretion. Uh, uh, we feel that this is uh, quite um, uh, uh, connected. So what we, what we want to uh, ensure to the wearer is that he will feel comfort in this, uh, wearing this pad in his underwear, but at the same time that it will not be obvious that he's wearing it, so it will be discreet and also reliable, so uh, in order that he can feel protected, uh, that his underwear is protected. Um, although, but it must be said that in this case also the conventional products also excel to some extent uh, in, 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 in this regard when it comes to comfort and discretion. Cleanliness, now this is a very important parameter that uh, is probably very then closely related to the customer relations or kind of a, a brand message that we're trying to convey. Our consumer will, will choose to use this product because of, uh, it's hard to say, a lifestyle choice, but still, it, it, it's not, his choice will not be based on a kind of a, a bodily, uh, if you can call it dysfunction, so incontinence. That, but because he wants to, for a, for a different reason, in this case, being able to worship his God. So cleanliness in this case, while commercial product, of course, also uh, ensures uh, uh, a wearer that uh, removal of urine from his body, her body, therefore, effectively, uh, keeping 
that person clean, we believe that in our case, cleanliness it has, I would say, much more deeper meaning. And then this is, again, uh, very much related to the customer relations. So this is something that we feel uh, we should really work on due to the fact that we must differentiate our product from conventional incontinence product. So uh, in order to uh, market it as a product that one would not be ashamed to buy or to wear, uh, but one that a wearer will feel that is something that will, let's say, enhance his life if one believes that religion and uh, 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 worship of one's God is something that is very important to him. Uh, yes, so I think, is there anything else missing? So, with that, I would like to thank you for attention. <coughs> what would be the, what would be the selling point for this world? Uh, yeah, well, yes, again, um, what I mentioned, like I said, um, uh, I mean, you were here in the morning, uh, when, the, when was the first time uh, when we mentioned this, that uh, from the conversation that we had with our uh, Muslim uh, colleague from Syria, he mentioned this, that it is very inconvenient for him to use a public toilet, uh, uh, and uh, then because, let's say, it, it will probably result in him staying in his underwear with urine, and that stops him from praying to Allah. And he does this five times a day, if I'm not. But he is not able to, because according to Quran, he is not allowed to worship Allah if he, if he is not completely clean. And he's clothes. So this is what we're, let's say, this let's say, if we would be able to market this to a Muslim male population as something that would ensure them cleanliness, even after, you know, using a public toilet. It's not a problem to do this at home, of course. You clean yourself when you're at home, but not while you're at work. So this would be the selling point. This is the whole message behind it, actually. <coughs> Then you, you find we can find your project near the mosque. You know, near the mosque. The mosque. Uh, to find it there. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we were thinking about this, you know, but um, I think it's a it's it's an individual person's decision. If you were would be in a position, would you go, let's say, to a public toilet near the mosque, for instance? And would you take a hygienic pad that is available there for you and use it? One would and one wouldn't. So we could either go in this way, but we believe that we would be offering as any other hygienic product that is already in the market, either that is sold in a pharmacy or a supermarket, a no fuss product. Uh -huh. How would be the, the relation with the consumer if it's one product between all the others in the supermarket. Oh, yeah, okay. but the thing is that there is no such product available. <coughs> I am referring to what is available and what is known is our female hygienic pets. But we're not talking about female consumers in this case. It will be uh, designed and marketed strictly to men. Mm -hmm. And also designed in such a way that it would fit, obviously, men's anatomy. Uh, let's say if, <laughs> if, if we come from this uh, 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 idea, then yes, I, I guess uh, Muslim market. Because I don't think our, our Western male is so concerned about this. But then again, why not? Uh, I, I guess you know, one could imagine that, that through raising public awareness, <coughs> why not for guys to decide to use this? And because keep their underwear clean. Yeah, the, the thing that would be a clash between uh, cultures because uh, in maybe Western culture it's you're not really a man if you have something like this in your pants. Well, and neither is in Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> so if you think your Muslim friends, if they will go with you to, to the store to buy beer and then also this. Uh, 
First of all, I doubt that a Muslim friend would go with me to buy beer. <laughs> and well, second of all, no, it's, it's like, you, I don't know. Um, it, it's again, like I said, uh, raising public awareness. Uh, like it was, uh, we were discussing this previously with a colleague over there. And he said, like 10 years ago, no one was talking about period, female menstruation. But now everyone is, I'm sure. Like, it's not a problem to go and, and buy hygienic pads for a girlfriend or mother or sister or whoever. It's blue ocean. <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> Of course, what you thanks, thanks for this for the presentation. Of course, what you would have to make sure, especially for that kind of product, that this is now fulfills the needs of one colleague. Yeah, it's the input of one Muslim. Of course, you would have to make some interviews uh, to get the, the feedback of, let's say, at least 10 to 20 different Muslims, Muslims and ask them, is that is that a problem for all of you, or is it a problem for a certain percentage of you, yeah? to get any rough idea how much could be the, the number of Muslims who could later on buy that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But then of course it would be quite easy to make a market research. You can, in all the official databases, you can find out the, the, the number of the Muslims living in Austria, living in Slovenia, living in Germany, whatever. And if you have a rough idea how much is the percentage of this uh, Muslims who would like to use this hygienic product, you could even easily find out if there's a market in behind, yeah? if this is a very small market or if this could even be a mass market and maybe in one year you will find this freshman's friend with a silver photo on it in every supermarket. Yeah? It is really, it is like, like many people, right? it, it's, in the first hand it's completely mad and, but on the second hand if you look at a little bit closer and have a deeper look it could really be a, a market. Huh? It's something which never, ever, as far as I understood, any company, any person had thought about. So we are absolutely the first one, except your friend, of course, you're thinking about that, yeah? or thinking about developing a concept for it. Not that we have a problem, that we're thinking, okay, what, what, what could we do? How could we solve this problem? And once again, you know, Blotion, as I told you yesterday, it's all about this value innovation. You must find a value for your customer. A really a value where the, where the customer is uh, willing to pay for it. And if this is really the need of many male Muslims, then it's a value for them, and then it could be established. Yeah? I'm not sure if you would, you would uh, take it uh, take it under your arms when you get out of the supermarket, but as Silva says, also other hygienic products are just bought in the supermarket. Yeah? And nobody is ashamed of buying some female hygienic products or uh, whatever. Yeah? So mm -hmm. maybe this could become quite common in the future. Yeah? Or maybe a different packaging. Not like this one that you have now, but uh, now more fancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. yeah. We are really bad to buy this. I, I, what we also discussed, I think we, you need some kind of George Clooney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something, yeah. And Muslim yeah. George Clooney, which really says that a real man uses them. Yes. Yeah? Not, not something we say you are ashamed of using it, and I will not tell anybody, but you see, if you are a real man, you are using it for a friend. No <laughs> doubt, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, c c could be, yeah. <laughs> At least he's, he's, he's a guy who also has some experience to bring in uh, some uh, complicated messages to the world. <laughs> Let's put it like that, yeah? Uh, and this, uh, this, 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 to, to find this value, this is, this is in all these three uh, business models we discussed today. That new hygiene product in this some completely new type of, of, of amusement park for the whole family where you get for lower price you get maybe even more experience and you, have, you, don't, you don't have to wait you get from one uh, experience from one uh, whatever it might be called to the other one you just get from one simulator to the other simulator or even you can even change in the simulator the kind of simulating to some extent so you have dramatically decreased uh, waiting time and uh, 
It is not displayed, displayed uh, at the moment, but of course this uh, epochs, epochs uh, approach, where you have in electricity all over in the city as certain hubs and making it very convenient for electrical car uh, owners to get, to get fuel again yeah? and the combination with, with, with the business. So I would say all three have the potential to come to the market, to really to become a production market. It was really fun working with you, it was really a lot of creativity here, you know, it's always a, a workshop is always a can't, can't, can't and a risk. Yeah? The risk is, is of course that you start the workshop and nobody has an idea. And I'm really happy that this was not the case today and there were a lot of really exciting idea, ideas. So, you know, at the end, I would just like you, as possible uh, investors, to say which of the ideas, which of the three concepts you have been presented now would you like to invest. You can also vote for your own idea, it's not forbidden. Just to give us a a clue where if you would have one million euro, yeah? one million euro is normal enough to, to start it, to start it, start it. Not to run a company for many years, but to start it. If you would have one million euro, where would you invest? Every group should, should come to a uh, conclusion, okay? Every group, one vote. For you it's easy. <laughs> I will just write it down here.
It's the ads. It's the ads. Yeah. So why do
requires help, preciousness. Whenever you want to discuss it in the future way, you want to get the presentation. Here's mine if you ever need an architect. Thanks a lot. No, that's yours. Thanks a lot, yeah. Yeah, I thought you'd give it back. So whenever you want to get it, you know, you refine your ideas, you want to do find some point to discuss it with you. Well, maybe you can meet the intervention camp, so you need somebody to bring you together with the right partners. Uh, I would be the happy to help you. Thank 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 you. Start with the start with the music and then say now we do it. We do it with the big machines to cut down the price. So you need to put it through all the producers going out there for the female life. Uh, I'm not sure what you do. It's not a good idea. But you don't see the risk, for example, that, uh, you know, because this is a kind of related to religion, you know. Yeah, no, I don't have to also to share the risk with this computer. Okay, just stay here that for instance, they sell bathing suits for women, which is body suits, just with their eyes exposed, and that is also based in the religion. But that's not, that's not problematic. Well, this is a controversial idea, I know that hopefully it will not be no, 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 on YouTube, you know? No, 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 <laughs> no. Not because of this, but you know, like, it can be a great idea, it's on the market, and then, I don't know, um, there comes a video or something, you know, when man is doing this into his pants or something, and then uh, you can see the organs, or, you know, whatever. And then, uh, it, it, because in this religion, maybe this is a bad thing, and if you're naked or something, you know, the risk of it is that then, you know, you have a, a, some, some religious person who are, you know, telling that this is not proper for a Muslim. In, the, in this way. Yeah. Thank you. 